kind of hanging out a little bit until it starts to cool down a little bit here in the evening and uh, then we can start walking this big pond out here I just want to walk some of the edge it's really thick on the uh, north side of it so I'm gonna walk that hopefully get into either some deer or pig action but the the sitting still just waiting to ambush is a little bit more productive but uh, it's also I'm finding it terribly boring the older I get the less I'm concerned about sitting and waiting for something to come by I just want to get out and enjoy the hunt and spotting and stalking is the best way that I know how to do that not quite as productive except for pigs very productive for pigs but this is deer season after all so I'm just gonna get out and get after it and as soon as the sun starts to cool a little bit, we'll head on out. Okay, little gear list before I get too underway. Shooting one of my High Plains models. Bow. No arrow rest, any of that kind of stuff. Just off knuckle. Really, really nice bow. About 56 pounds, I think, in my drawing. Show you one of my hunting arrows here, too. We're using River Cane. Turkey fletchings, self knocks, wrapped with sinew. And uh, on the end, these little Cahokia points there. We'll put my finger in there for reference. So you can see they're pretty small, only about 40 grains or so. And uh, really good little penetrating pieces. And we've been, we've been having some really good luck with these here lately. Quiver. It's uh, actually my Stone Age quiver. It's made all with Stone Age tools, stitched with real, real sinew. And uh, let me pull it out here. Got my really worn down bison skinner. We're working on kind of a beveling project. You can see how it's starting to bevel from resharpening it so much. Just really nice set overall. But it's getting about that perfect time of night, so we're gonna start uh, start spotting and stalking through this. Hopefully, we get on some animals. This is all cattle country, so all of this it's not mowed see there's just cows that are in here so they kind of keep the the terrain you can actually hear them in the background moving and carrying on we'll run across some cows no doubt they they're usually good for running and hunt but uh it just makes for such good good habitat for hunting of course all the the pigs and the deer and whatnot are all free range they come and go as they please but Got a lot of ground to cover, so. so I'm just walking, walking through all this marshy stuff now. So people ask if these moccasins that I wear does it hurt them to get wet? Nope, I will walk literally through all of this marsh, get them completely soaking wet. Doesn't bother them a bit. They'll dry out. makes for a little bit noisy walking so you gotta keep your eyes peeled ahead <laughs> so one of the questions you may ask me about my moccasins I know somebody's gonna ask it so I thought I'd cover it say why don't you if they're just soaking wet in all this marsh why don't I just go barefoot especially like I used to and I would but it's gonna actually slow me down even more. There's a whole lot of green briar out here. That's also why I'm not in shorts. Like there's a, just tons and tons of green briar and it just shreds my legs and my feet if I don't keep them covered. So to me, it's just a lesser of two evils, half wet moccasins or or have shredded legs and feet. So I'm not worried so much about what I step on. Because the tough bottom of my feet are fairly tough. It's when you walk and you rake it across the, the top of your foot. So all this here that you see, this all green briar with these thorns. It's just the whole thing's just full of it. So it's easier just wear moccasins and get them wet and have a little bit of abrasion resistance.
on my skin. Kind of a funny story. I think you've seen it in one of my other videos. Walking, I always like to walk by places I've hunted before. And I always like to walk by places I've hunted before on my journey. This is where I shot. I'll show you the area and you'll recognize it. Watch. But I shot a pig here. Uh, maybe it was, I think, in the spring. I'll walk you right up to it and see if you start recognizing it from one of my videos previously. This will be fun. I'll, I'll kind of recreate where I was standing when I shot from the film area and see if you can recognize it. Kind of neat. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you recognize that. I was standing about here, and those pigs came in. A couple red ones saw me right here, and then right over here there was a little black one. Didn't see what had happened. The other one spooked, and he was still there. Made a quick shot, quarter away, ran right up that palmetto patch, and then turned right in and died right in there by those two big cabbage palms. Have a look at that. Uh, always fun to go back and look at the places that I've uh, I've taken other animals. It's always it's a good time. I enjoy that. I always walk by a place and say, oh, I remember I remember that hunt really well. Got that one, got that one. Just watch her go, she's going down. That was a beautiful shot. That was a beautiful shot. Just watch where she goes. She made it a lot further than I thought, but that's a good shot, all right. So, boy, that just worked out. Can't believe that worked. Holy smokes, I saw them. I was all the way across that pond and I've been in my moccasins walking through shin deep water i saw it was probably that little button feeding literally right here i could see its head so i snuck all the way around this thing and came up and i had a feeling but my wind was blowing in which actually helped me in this scenario because as it as my wind blew in that deer jumped out here and the sun is directly in my back so i just had an opportunity she couldn't really see me i mean the sun is in at my back so i got so lucky on that but i don't even think i hit even i don't full draw a lot i don't full draw anyway i have a short draw but i don't even think i hit full draw i was just so concentrated on dropping that arrow in and it did too it's 
it looks like back of the lung maybe liver that's a dead deer without a doubt and i'm watching right where that where that button goes because he's going right to the same spot and that deer is probably laying over there but we're going to give it a little bit of time and uh, i'll get up with vast and we'll go get that deer i'm just trying to get some after the shot kind of stuff because that's what i cross right there all that marsh the whole way <laughs> to be able to sneak up on deer on the ground and then through all this sloshy stuff <laughs> it's so difficult to do and i haven't uh so i haven't spot and stalked killed a deer in a little while but i was like that's just kind of how i wanted to do it this year i don't like really sitting i have been sitting a little bit but i much prefer to monkey around and look for pigs and look for deer all that and I just cannot believe that that worked out the way it is and she let me sit there and get the shot off. If that sun wasn't right at my back, I would have never got that shot off. And that's what I was banking on. I knew the wind was messed up, but that definitely worked out in my favor. Some whistling ducks flying over there. There was a whole bunch here and they all jumped up whenever I was sneaking across. I thought they would scare the deer, but I guess they didn't. Just that little patch right there of palmettos and cabbage palms, a little dry spot. And they were bedding down in there. Oh man, that is exciting. But I'm like, I'm like 99, 98, 99% sure we're gonna go recover that deer. That was, <laughs> I go back and look at the shot. It wasn't tight to the shoulder, but a deer's lungs go back a little further than a pig. And that looked like it was right in there where it needed to be. I'm surprised she made it that far, but that was even if it was even if it was behind the lungs, it's in the liver and she's dead. She'll be we'll find her over there in an hour. So I'm go back and relax. Talk to Vastin about it. I'm gonna go find that girl. Alright. Way back over there, those palm trees. That's the ones that uh, where I shot the deer. Vastin's on blood over here right now, so I'm just gonna carry along for a minute. We just started walking kind of this trail where I marked she went in and found some blood here on the ground. Right there on those, you can see that. Pretty good blood even for this distance she traveled, so she kept the arrow with her. And there's just more blood right here, right there. So we'll follow this and let you know what we come up with. We got a lot of blood up here. The blood trail is actually picking up now, which is a good sign. Oh yeah, look at it out here. Oh yeah, all over. I mean, she's leaking this stuff like crazy in here. She's got to be up here somewhere. It's smeared all over this grass. Oh yeah, all over here. All right. Yep, right here. Okay. So still. That way. <laughs> we just followed good blood trail and like lost it, and and it's like she. I was like she could literally be 15 yards over there. Did I not just say that? And he walked over. Oh, here she is. <laughs> yep, there she is. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> That's exactly where I said I hit it. It just just was a liver, just back a teeny teeny tiny bit. That was a big old doe. Yeah, does. awesome. Hey, thanks for the help, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll, you, your blood trail's gone. Uh, I know. Well, it's like, I mean, there ain't nothing on these palmettos right here where she ran in. There's a little bit of right here yeah. on the side of that bush. That was it. Yeah. It's done run out, hopefully. Good. Got it. Good you sized doe. Yep. Oh, man. Thanks. Ryan? Not you. Ryan, you're on YouTube now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's another Ryan. He's over here hunting too. He came to help out. He showed up just in time for the good part. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's the, the shot. Obviously, it's leaning back. So when it's up on its side, it's not that far. So it's a tiny, tiny bit back. I thought it would look really good. I thought it was more here. And that's the difference. Like that right there, and you're in the lungs here. Now you're liver. So crazy. But you know what? Founder, success story stone point with one of these here we'll prop her up and yak in a minute so we got this really nice uh florida doe pretty good size 
spot and stock shot was like 20 yards i thought it was i thought for sure i was going to get some lung in that but didn't looks like it's all just liver but went probably oh shoot i don't know maybe 400 yards or so but good blood trail to follow pretty much the whole way except for the last 20 yards and then ran out well and then but she was there dead so all i had to do is walk a circle and found her but nice uh shutter with a nice coral point which is inside of her i'll probably hopefully retrieve that whenever i gut her here in just about a minute and i'll show you that later and cane arrow primitive bow one of my uh high plains model spot and stock doesn't get any better than that hey guys ryan gill here with hunt primitive where we entertain educate and inspire. And I want to thank you for following along on our adventure today. And if it is your first time visiting our channel, I hope it was enough to get you to subscribe and follow along and check out a lot of the other hunts very similar to this that we have posted previously. And I know that you probably have a lot of questions about the hunt, especially if, if it is your first time. Say, you know, what's the glue that I use to put on the stone point? How do you make them? What's the string stuff I wrapped it in? All those questions can be answered at the link down in the description and what that is is that it's a link to the directory of videos at huntprimitive.com it's completely free and it's basically all my YouTube videos teaching you how to do all the stuff that we did here in this video today now if you're also one of the people following along and you're a little upset by the video saying well I did the video just to kill a deer from a YouTube channel you have to remember we eat a lot of wild game in our family none of the the animals that we shoot ever ever go to waste we uh we make steaks and soup and chops and burger and jerky and all kinds of food out of these animals that we do it's perfectly legal it's uh how that we grow animal populations through the Pittman robertson act and i invite you to also click the link down in that description so you can follow along and learn more about that as well because we take great pride and being hunters especially primitive hunters here in the united states of america so hey thanks for following along and we'll catch you on the next adventure